Okay, so new features. Um, what do we have um, coming up? So there are some key ones here with regards to the network performance monitor, and this is very much the platform that's being um, feature upgraded uh, the most. There's some significant ones in SAM, um, but we're going to be showing you NPM today. And the first thing you'll be noticing uh, as we go through the live demonstration is the fact that we have a whole new user interface. Um, anybody with more than four or five Orion modules uh, will perfectly understand the need for this. Uh, this is not just a, a kind of a prettification exercise. Um, I hope you'll agree that it is prettier, uh, but clearly the biggest thing here is usability and uh, navigating around the application, certainly with regards to the growth of features, uh, functions and modules that have taken place in the last few years has become an essential um, uh, requirement for the uh, platform. So what you're going to see today is the new menu system, the fact that we have different ways of presenting that menu system now, and you'll also see in terms of the web page displays, um, they've all been given a bit of polish. So the fundamentals are still there. The, the, um, the strength of Orion uh, has always been the way that it presents data and the way that people use the um, web interface. And in this release, um, it has had some work done on it to kind of give it some refresh, uh, make it look a bit more modern. And hopefully, um, you'll, you'll be seeing um, uh, things that you like in there, some improvements into the way information is displayed. And um, so again, with all of this, uh, questions, feedback is always going to be uh, beneficial. NetPath. Now, um, hopefully, you've all seen um, um, some uh, exposure to the new features before. Um, NetPath is pretty much the biggest new function that's coming along. NetPath is uh, Soloin's kind of first foray um, into um, providing path analysis outside of IPSLA. IPSLA, for those of you who've got the VNQM, the Voice and Network Quality module, uh, will understand what I mean by that. Uh, we can uh, leverage Cisco technology to do site-to-site -site distributed polling. What NetPath is going to give us is a, a lot more flexibility in terms of where we have a source and a destination uh, in terms of that path analysis, but also the level of information that you're going to retrieve from that is significantly better. So for the NetPath function, when we get into the live demo, you'll see uh, the, the techniques uh, that are being deployed are giving us uh, visibility of each hop in the path, including MPLS um, visibility. Uh, we are going to be seeing um, uh, information regarding um, who owns the devices, where are they, changes in that. Uh, so SolarWinds, um, this kind of project kind of born out of a, a lab test from some of their engineers having a play, realizing the capabilities that they could create, and it very quickly de uh, developed into a feature uh, which, of value. And it's been continued to develop to this point of release. So it uses a number of techniques. Um, it's going to be using various probing functions. And the big benefit with this is using and mimicking genuine real-world protocol communication. So um, things like firewall rules, um, things like um, VRF, um, QoS, those policies are going to be maintained. So again, the accuracy of the path analysis is hopefully going to be very strong for you. We'll have a look at the demonstration in a minute so you can actually see in detail. Uh, the F5 functionality, uh, we'll see um, how that's been enhanced and improved. Uh, that's um, always been very good. It's always been possible with the Orion platform for, uh, for several versions now to see data related to the F5 load balance of the configuration, uh, the farms that have been there, the pools. Um, what's improved this time is correlation. You'll see um, in the visual displays how we can journey through that path. Cisco stack. Now, we know that this has been a long running request. Um, ourselves, uh, when we provide our consultancy and installation services, uh, we are um, often being um, putting into place uh, visibility and alerting based on stack status. That uh, has been significantly improved. It's not just also a case of um, stack members um, uh, into switch communication, uh, but you'll also see a lot more capabilities from that function. And then the last one, uh, we have ServiceNow integration. So this is the first one. Now ServiceNow as a, um, a service, uh, as an online cloud provider of um, service management, uh, ticketing, and many other 
uh, capabilities uh, is very, very strong in the marketplace. SolarWinds have got a very strong partnership now, and with this, we'll see the capabilities um, of using that integration uh, with the service now to create um, and send tickets and alerts out of Orion into ServiceNow, exchange of data. So that workflow is all going to be very neat. And we'll see that in a few moments. Okay, so let's um, have a look at some slides with regards to NetFlow. So let's have a look at the next slide. So you'll see here um, that um, a fundamental, especially when we're talking about uh, organizations with uh, lots of remote sites, or any remote sites actually, where um, users from those remote sites are consuming services um, that may be part of the corporate data center, they may be part of a, a third party cloud provider, um, application as a service provider. Um, what is not possible easily to a great depth is to be able to identify the quality of communications between sites, between the user level and those services. IPSLA does give us some of that fundamental capabilities, but we are reliant on IPSLA devices. We're reliant on the ability for us to configure those devices. And um, while they're good, they're not going to give us the level of visibility that we would possibly like uh, all the way through. Net uh, path in terms of this, as I said, is going to be using uh, probes. Uh, so this is a little agent that's installed on a currently a Windows server. Um, uh, other OSs, uh, Linux obviously will uh, follow in uh, due course, um, where we can say, right, I've got a machine. I could indeed p um, install this on a server at the access switch layer where all my PC sits in my um, Paris office. How do they communicate back to um, my data center where my SharePoint runs or where my ERP system runs. Or from a voice and video conference perspective, how does Paris uh, communicate to uh, Geneva, uh, connect to Berlin and London? The ability to do path analysis uh, when we see the live demo um, and the visibility, and if you click on the next link, please, John, uh, we'll see the path build up as we go along. Uh, the chain, the change of that chain, and obviously the endpoints. This clearly can have um, a big impact on the quality of our service. Um, in testing, there have been um, reports of um, this function being able to find that traffic's being routed from um, London to New York and back again uh, because of a simple routing misconfiguration. There's going to be lots of fe um, features and um, uh, monitoring data that's going to be now available at your fingertips using this technology. Okay, on to the F5, because I'm really keen to get into uh, the demonstration as quickly as possible now. Um, you can see on the screen that we've got some uh, fundamentals in here at the moment, but uh, we're now going to be getting um, all the way through from the top level of the configuration of an F5 all the way down to um, the actual services being consumed. And so, uh, when we see this in the, slide, in the live demo, um, the presentation is very neat and very clean. So even people that do not understand what an F5 uh, does in full, uh, they're going to be able to uh, very quickly and easily identify where there are problems with that topology. And the last slide to show here is a little bit more background on ServiceNow. And at this point, you'll see um, the workflow that we've got here. now. Um, we're always at point, uh, pains to point out to our clients that Orion is not a ma uh, an alerting, um, an auditing platform. It's there to monitor, it's there to capture that data. It's there to generate an alert, but it's then not really there to workflow. There's some functionality in there to do so, but really the ideal is that we get um, those alert situations into a ticketing, into a help desk platform as quickly as possible, so they can actively be worked on in the right way. Uh, they can be allocated, they can have ownership taken care of, um, and also with regards to functionality in service now, bringing other data sets in, um, identifying uh, the asset in the infrastructure, identify its service impact um, in the infrastructure. That's a real, real big strength of service now. Uh, so again, getting it into that platform, um, giving uh, users the ability to um, use the benefits and the power of that platform as quickly as possible um, is going to be a massive uh, benefit uh, and time saver uh, when Orion is making identifications of issues in your environment. Okay, so at this point, we're going to drop across to the live demo. 
Um, okay, so what we're seeing on the screen at the moment is um, our NetPath services. Well, I'm just going to start off by um, going through and orientating you through with the new user interface. So you'll see the big thing at the top here is that we haven't got a multitude of tabs. The dashboards is now where essentially that structure resides. So you can see that we've got, um, in this case, just NPM installed as you have other modules such as server and application monitor, uh, network configuration manager, they will appear in this list uh, to the right. And so um, the, the balance, the ease of access is maintained, but the ability to structure this um, is uh, much clearer. And you can also see that there is two ways of presenting. So this is the expanded version. Uh, we also have the ability to change to a condensed view. And when you see the menu now, I had. Am I? Is my mouth click taking place here? There we go. Okay. So, um, so this is a, a demonstration. This is a beta platform, um, so that not every aspect of the menu may work here. Um, but what we have, let's say, is the menu system. You can see that we've got some definitive structure around key entries. So alerting. Reporting is now separated out into specific areas. This was a big feedback area uh, in terms of common areas that need to be navigated to, um, needing and benefiting from their own uh, path. Um, and we still have the traditional menu links coming here. Now, when you upgrade, your existing menu structure will automatically be mapped to this function. So if I drop across to the home page here, Fresh. Do we have a freeze, John? Can you just test for me, please? Yeah, no, I think. Okay, I think it's just my remote pressing of the button, so let me try that again. So I want to go to the summary page, please. Okay, so. As I say, you'll be familiar with the web display. Fundamentally, it has not changed. Uh, what you can see on the screen here is the fact that we have the same kind of displays. We've got our all-nose list, our map. Uh, but you can see the graphics, the quality and uh, finish of that is, is uh, more in keeping with um, uh, where we're at in 2016. And uh, as we go down, John, I'm afraid you're going to have to drive my left mouse click is not working. And uh, as we go down, you'll see uh, fundamentally the same capability is here. There's new ways of presenting information. And certainly when we start looking at this from a, an alert condition perspective, uh, the big thing here is making information easier to read. Um, so um, access of information clearly in the larger installation is essential to be able to determine issues quickly and easily um, without having to, to navigate through uh, a lot of information which is unnecessary. OK, so let's go and have a look at NetPath. And on the first page here, you can see that we've got positive uh, experience. Sorry about this, people. You know what um, live demonstrations are like. They're always there to throw up curveballs. Okay. okay Do you want to? Can you go back in the browse on the first tab? John, if you go back in the first tab and then go back in the browser where we had the NetPath listing. Yeah. Maybe that will help us. OK, so NetPath. Um, there is no limitation uh, in terms of the number of paths that you can create um, in terms of licensing. This is a feature that's being provided as part of existing licensing. There's no additional costs. Um, attributed to this function. 
and so you're only going to be limited in terms of performance functions perhaps uh, of your underlying platform. So we have a number of um, paths created which I would love to show you. Yeah, we're going to Mark, we're yeah, we're struggling to get back to that for some reason. The the NetPath uh, link isn't working, you know. Do you want to um, put it in manually? So it's just UI slash NetPath, I believe. Yeah, sorry, just one second. Uh, everything's freezing here. Sorry about this, folks. It just seems to be. If it, it, well, you've got if you go on the QoE tab and um, manually adjust the URI. Ah, oh, there we go. Right, excellent. Um, okay, so you can see in this list uh, we have a number of examples. Now, uh, things to bear in mind with regards to NetPath. Um, I'll point this out early on because it's something that um, will catch people out. Uh, we've got an entry in there for Google. Um, Google, as I'm sure you will appreciate, run more than just one web server uh, performing search functions. They have many thousands of them. So when you go to the web address www.google.com, um, on the first run you may get one server, on the other you'll get another, etc. So the, the point um, is going to change. So either in terms of creating something to Google, you need to try and pick out an IP address of a server, um, or be conscious of the fact that as that runs over time, you're going to get uh, an end visible list um, with many hundreds of endpoints displayed. Clearly, that will depend on how many um, end servers there are by that provider. Underneath, you'll see that we've got our status list. Uh, we can create new entries. We can disable them. And if we drill in, to one of our entries now. And so what we want to do is show you uh, that we can, uh, in this case, we're monitoring THWACK. And um, it was a little bit quick there, but what you also saw is that we had from and then a name. Now that is the machine name where the probe is installed. You could have a probe installed at 20 locations around the world, all being sent to the THWACK.com website that would clearly allow you to uh, monitor the performance of the site uh, analysis from multiple locations. And that's not drilling down, is it? OK, John, uh, I'm going to take over. I'm going to use our platform to demonstrate. Uh, unfortunately, there's not as many good examples of issues, uh, but I'm keen to sh get to show people uh, the real nuts and bolts of this. So I'm just going to take this on. And in the meantime, if you can resolve the issues with your browser, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. So I think uh, the these are dev, uh, development boxes that are hosted in uh, Brno in the Czech Republic. So I guess there's um, an issue with our access to, the, to these dev boxes um, at the moment. Um, but uh, but generally, yeah, I think you know what we've seen um, today. It's really, what's worked really well for um, for our customers is the fact that they're able to kind of monitor mostly to the, the outside interface in our network. And what really we're um, we're running with with NetPath is is really we're taking that but up beyond right the way out to the customers' uh, servers and wherever they're hosted. So you know it's been described as almost like map the internet is, is an expression that's been used um, from uh, from some of our customers, and uh, you know it, it provides I suppose network administrators visibility that they haven't had uh, to date, which is uh, which is again a widely kind of a requested kind of feature. Okay, thank you. Um, so we have muted. Hopefully, you can see my screen now, so we can see that we've got a number of entries here. If I go into a function here, so again, this is one of our Windows servers, and what we have here, an immediate display, is the path. So this is the probe location. You can see that this is a Windows server. If we hover over. Uh, we are getting some information on this. We are getting that information because this is a monitored object in Orion. Again, a critical benefit of this. If, for example, this was our infrastructure up until this point here, 
and we had monitored by Orion as we do here we've got a microtech router we would be getting information from that device because Orion is already capturing it so you can see here we've got uh, CPU memory we've got interface traffic um, the interface information as we hover over here you can see the data that we've got coming in and out so this is enriching the level of visibility so it's not just about kind of recreating trace route trace route is great uh, we can see the hop by hop situation but what NetPath is going to do is going to be capturing information along this path it's going to be structuring it in a neat and organized way which is essential obviously where we have um, long path chains in the communication from endpoint to endpoint and so monitoring devices along this path in Orion is only going to extend the level of visibility that you have within NetPath from there you can see that we've got an icon here that's got a three on it and we've got um, three dot uh, circles uh, overlaid to each other this is indicating that this is an AS um, a definition so in this case the um, service provider OTE and if I do a single click on that that will now expand it and now you can see that we've got our three devices when I hover over that um, a blue uh, box will turn around the one that I'm activating again a hover over will appear and the square um, frame will go around to the other devices from that service provider so again information being displayed in a way where is there a common problem within the service provider network wherever that may be in the chain if I come over here and you can see um, uh, from this perspective we've got a number of systems as part of this provider and I've got a nice neat way of going okay I was looking at that I don't need to look at that anymore let's take it off and let's have a look and see what's going over here I can drag this around I can zoom in and out and I can click onto this when I click onto this I then get information so this device is going to be queried we're going to be able to see details for this now conceptually when I click on a device the latency value that is going to appear up here is the latency being experienced from the source to that hop device if I wanted to understand the latency between objects I can do that by clicking on the link and now I can see the Delta the communication quality between these two objects here again the visualizations is presented in a way that gives me common structure because we are collecting information from these nodes you can see that we are able to identify not only who it is the originator AS but also the service information now maybe or maybe not this is relevant for you as an organization but it's certainly beneficial for you to be able to feed back to your service providers and say um, that there may be peering issues uh, that there's long-term issues and by way of long term you can see along the bottom that we have the historic view so we have this path history as I say in terms of the uh, demonstrations here I'm afraid we haven't got any um, lined up uh, John please let me know um, if you get your platform up and running so we can show some um, breakpoints in here but what this would do is we would have a, a yellow or a red indicator on this path and it will allow us to then click on that and go back in time and see what was going on at this point so again it's frustrating for me that we're not able to demonstrate this here but say for example this icon here was red or this bar was red a we can see the latency metrics for it but we go back in time and we can see the routes that were in operation at that point we might see that this object here is red because the latency um, uh, was uh, poor at that point or the fact that there was a route change at the point and now the communication between um, our sites was going down a slower route that information would turn a line into a yellow or red condition uh, a node into a yellow or red condition obviously depending on where the issue lies and uh, with that we've then got clear visibility of why and where in the chain we've got performance degradation essentially also where they exist who is responsible for this now clearly if I had a path between this point and the end point over here so let me just minimize that again um, uh, between the service provider 
um, um, cloud server uh, on a regular basis, and I saw that it was con uh, continually within this uh, service provider network, I know how to deal with that. I know who I need to talk to. I know where to see people. And of course, within Orion, the ability to provide this information in a form which you can send to that provider. Here is the data. Here is the metrics and the analysis that tells me and confirms that I'm experiencing this problem. On the left-hand side, you can see that we've got three levels of detail. So I'm looking at the medium. We can reduce this to um, a minimum level. I typically, so far in the work that I've been doing, have been concentrating on the medium. Uh, but we also have the maximum detail. Now, the great thing about this, as you can see, is that it overlays the interhop performance you can see more textual information. Um, now, clearly, Solvins have provided this functionality to, uh, to cater for situations where there are lots of devices in the chain, and so you can easily move and navigate around. Now, in terms of this single example, you can see that there's a, um, a lot of route options that take place between um, the OT global infrastructure and the INET, or uh, in this case, um, uh, DOC. So I'm hoping that what you uh, see here um, is, um, is interesting, is exciting you. Um, the functionality of deploying this, obviously upgrading NPM uh, will provide this functionality. Uh, and when you go through the process of creating a path, if I just go back, it is very, very simple. Uh, you can see that I want, I can apply a value in this case, I think I better spell my own company website by now. Uh, so you can put your address in here. Um, you can also see that you can give it an alias, um, your uh, polling frequency, and then when you do next, you can choose your uh, path. You can see how many are on there at the moment. And you can also use this interface to deploy directly a new probe. So clearly, if this is a, a device on your infrastructure, a Windows Server, uh, then with the necessary rights, uh, you can automatically deploy the probe from within the Orion web interface. OK, so that's NetPath. John, if we can jump back across to yourself so I can carry on and show the Cisco and ServiceNow function. OK, just okay. taking you off of mute. Yeah, I think I'm back, I'm back there now, Mark. Yeah, OK. Fantastic. OK. So Excellent. Thank you. No um, okay, so um, F5. Um, this here is the page that's accessed from the load balancing menu link. And you can see, um, now this is a dev platform. So this is um, uh, highly loaded. There's lots of different uh, platforms in here. Um, but what you can see from this, and I can actually drive now, excellent, um, is that we've got our defined services. So across all of our F5s, you can see all of the um, endpoint function services that are in play. You can see nice and quickly and clearly um, where there are potential issues. Uh, as is the case across all of Orion, you can highlight and retrieve more information without having to click anywhere just by hovering over and seeing exactly what's going on. Uh, you can see as we scroll down this page, that we go from services into the topology to the manager level, to the local travel, uh, traffic managers, and then even to each of the virtual server definitions. And as I go even further, you will then see visibility of the pools. Now, um, for those of you on the call that um, uh, manage F5s and use that functionality, I'm hoping this is um, nice and clear and you're seeing that this is going to give you a really nice visual way of um, identifying the topology of your F5s, 
the configuration items of them, and essentially the um, correlation between them. So if I click on one of these, you can see that I then get a menu link, and I can say, okay, let's go into the details page for this. Actually, no, first thing I want to do is identify the relationships. So at that point, you can see that I've gone into the pool. I can see the topology of that pool. I can identify all of the functions and services around that. You can see very quickly and easily there is a warning um, at the traffic manager level. Uh, hovering over will give us visibility of that. Again, at this point, we could drill down and have a look at this in more detail. And then underneath, a much quicker and easier visibility into the connections. So we're on a virtual server here. If I just go back, all of this information is available. Oh, no. All of this information is available, uh, all of the layers. So if I was looking at this from a services perspective, click on this, show relations, and each of the different points in time are going to come back and give us our visibility. Now this um, connections by virtual server using the default charting mechanism so we can correlate and we can see how um, this affects. Now again, this is demo environment, so the information in here is not particularly exciting, um, but uh, again, you're going to be able to pick up on the benefit of this, I'm sure. When we go into a detail page, then this is then going to bring us into um, more um, detailed understanding. We can again see correlations. We can see events that are taking place. So because we're extending the amount of data that we collect from the infrastructure of an F5, uh, there's a lot of capabilities within there. Then it's um, going to bring this information together. You can see that there are a number of new metrics that weren't available previously. And again, the ability to do the topology. And uh, this, for me, is, is the biggest thing. Um, F5 users that we deployed this before, it was very painful to get this um, correlation. It just didn't exist. Uh, whereas now it's all done for you. And literally all you need to do um, to provide this function is to add the F5s um, into the Orion application, and it will automatically collect this data. OK, I'm going to um, go to the Cisco. So I'm hoping that that link there is the one. Excellent. OK, there's a good chance that I'm going to be correct in this, um, that a, no, um, a large percentage of you um, out there are running switch stacks. Now, what we have uh, within uh, functionality of 11 at the moment is that we can monitor a, a, a switch. It's a single entity unit, in effect, to Orion. Uh, we can tick some interfaces and identify the traffic uh, between the stack um, switch ports. What that doesn't give us is um, ability to see what the um, overall um, ring health is, um, the um, communication between them, um, the um, configuration of them. Now, I have to say, this is not um, the most complete um, entry. There is a better one. John, I don't know if you've got that in this demo. I know we had that the other day. Um, so this um, is just a two-stack member switch. Um, you can see that we've got some configuration items being displayed here. We can see um, the configuration of communication. In fact, here there is only one um, day connection in place. The other one is either not configured or not working not working in this situation, and we see the topology um, of the members and their asset information. When there are issues, when there is um, communication issues between them, when there are circumstances where Muted. Um, we have um, uh, uh, extended utilization on here, this screen, this tab on the no details menu will automatically show this information, um, and clearly there is alerting around this and indeed all of the other functionality that I've shown you thus far um, because of the extra data modeling that's being performed. Okay, we've got uh, 10 minutes left. Uh, the last one that I wanted to show you uh, was ServiceNow. Um, so ServiceNow 
Um, for those of you not aware of ServiceNow or not users of ServiceNow, they're a very big um, uh, cloud-based provider um, for CMDB function, service management, obviously, um, for ticketing and help desk. So it is very much um, a, a platform to manage your entire infrastructure. I indicated on the slide section of the presentation uh, that a big part of uh, the work that um, Orion is doing is to go and collect the information. It's out there, it's collecting data, you're generating um, your visual displays, uh, you're seeing the level of data that we collect. Um, but when issues happen, um, we want to be able to deal with them nice and efficiently uh, with the right information to make that process from um, issue identification to resolution as quick and painless as possible. So what we have in Orion, we have that functionality of data collection. What ServiceNow has is um, the um, management of that. We have the CIs of the device. We know what that service group is. Uh, we know that this IIS server is part of um, the CRM application, and that CRM application is um, three other servers and five other application systems within its um, model. When that information is in service now, we're able to really extend the visibility. We're able to uh, put that into a ticketing path. And what will happen is when an alert is raised, the information will go across to service now. It will appear in the um, uh, list. Obviously, there is a lot of um, filtering capabilities in service now on reception of that so you can um, control what raises a ticket what does not um, once it's in that service ticketing list um, somebody's going to take some ownership of it it may be automated all that kind of thing um, we get the extended data sets we can start auditing we can start logging um, we can start um, using the information that orion has passed over so if i just show you how simple it is uh, in terms of configuration, uh, we provide a name. Uh, you'll be provided as part of your ServiceNow um, uh, account um, a web address for it. You just provide that together with a service account that has uh, the necessary permissions. Obviously, that will be provided in the admin guide. If you need to use a, a proxy, and at that point, um, ServiceNow will be available as an option in your alerts management. So when you're creating and defining your alert rules, you will now have a whole new action to play with. And so if we just choose this, we've got a net path alert that we've got a definition around. So all of this is very familiar to you. You can see that we've got a rule here that's looking for a path with Google in it. Um, and anything other than good, let us know about. So a pretty broad spectrum alert. But under the trigger actions, you'll see that we have a new entry, create a service now incident. And because we haven't got a service now definition in here at the moment, um, we wouldn't um, don't get all the visibilities. But essentially at this point, uh, we would now be able to map. Um, the data fields. So we can put in there um, automatically that the network team and Bob Smith is responsible for this. So that automatically that will appear in his ServiceNow um, active alert list. Um, that we have um, data mapping fields to make sure that when ServiceNow retrieves it, again, the information that it presents to the users um, in the incident and ticketing lists uh, is informative. They know exactly what the device is. Uh, they know what the issue is. They know the severity. Um, they can see the asset data correlation. Uh, and what will also come back from that is uh, that communication is an incident ID. And when that incident ID comes in, and we are looking at the alert list here, what we will have within the um, alert definition is um, an incident ID field. So we can click on that and we can go directly to ServiceNow. We can click on the, um, uh, the alert itself and we can um, uh, see the incident value in there. So we've got true cross communication. This is not just a case of Orion sending an alert and forgetting about it. Uh, we've got true correlation 
uh, when the reset takes place, when that device comes back up, we are then in a position where um, service now is being updated. And again, in your ruling, you can determine whether you auto close or you literally um, provide an update um, uh, note entry to say that Orion has identified the device is back up and someone can validate that and then close the ticket manually. Okay, so I've shown everything that I would like to show today. I'm just going to have a look at the question list here. And I'm struggling to see. There we go. Uh, OK, so we've got a question here. Can I see when the path changes? Uh, so this is a net path related question. Uh, yes, absolutely. So when um, you see um, that you have, now let's hope get this through now. Good. When you see a path, uh, you see that historic timeline at the bottom. So if at um, 11, 05 this morning, um, there was a performance degradation. Uh, we could look at that in the net path history bar. Uh, what that would also allow us to see is obviously if it's yellow or red, if it's broken thresholds. And uh, we can click on that, go back to that point, and we can see the route that it was taking, and we can see the fact that there was a path change during that point. Another question, can a probe look at a uh, specific application. Uh, yes, so um, when we create the probe, we can provide um, the, part, uh, the port number, and there is a list of supported ports at the moment. So um, depending on the port that you use, uh, will then align to the application uh, that you're supporting there. The one that I did in the demonstration was to a web address, and therefore I put port 80 clearly. Uh, but if you're using other protocols, um, and say that the moment there is a defined list, um, expect more to come in due course. Uh, NetPath, uh, is it possible to export these views? Um, so if we're looking at a, a path operation, which I would love to show you if the page um, loads up, um, at the moment there is um, not the kind of export to, to PDF uh, function. So um, at the moment, there isn't a, uh, an ability to export that to a kind of PDF report as such, um, but there are reporting functionality items within um, the application, which is going to give you visibility. And obviously, um, at the moment, you can take your, your screenshots. The, the GUI for this is interactive, so if you want to remove the path history bar, uh, if you want to zoom in and out and position things in preparation for that, uh, then absolutely. Uh, can network, uh, NetPath be used for LAN uh, across multiple bu uh, buildings? Uh, yes, it can. Uh, essentially, this obviously is a layer three technology. So any device uh, in the chain uh, that's using any routing, any routing protocols, is going to appear in there as a hop. Um, and at that point, you can see it. So obviously, that fully depends on your internal LAN infrastructure. OK, so where do you configure um, alerts and paths for, for net uh, path? So there are definition areas. And so when we are in the net path entry itself, we can put our thresholds in place. Uh, we can change uh, the values within the um, functional areas. Uh, we can put them in the uh, settings. And when we are um, creating the alerts on that, we can create a, a very generic rule. And if you're Remember when I was showing you this before? Uh, I'm not sure if we've still got that page. No. Um, when we were in here, I had a very generic alert definition. And it was literally the NetPath name has Google in it, and its status is anything other than good. But you'll see here. Um, that we can um, use this drop down and uh, test them. So, uh, okay, so we've got um, a trigger action already locking this out. Um, but yes, there will be other options on here. Um, so we can say, uh, I want to 
look for certain values, I want to look for root changes, I want to look for um, any hop that's over its individual threshold. Um, there's lots of different um, alerting levels and functions that you can include within there. Uh, can I install the pre-gold version of NCM for testing? Yes. So I said at the beginning uh, that Orion uh, NPM and indeed the other Orion modules are going to go to release candidates um, as a public release, a uh, customer release very shortly. Um, the approach is a standard um, in terms of what SolarWinds do. It will be phased, so they'll be doing 10% um, of customers one day and then another group of customers, so they'll be slowly rolling it out. Um, so it, you will receive an email uh, to your registered email addresses and if you log on to the customer portal, when you go to your NPM uh, license entry, you will see a link at the bottom to the release candidate. At that point, you can download it. Um, and again, the recommendation is not to install it in production. It is re, uh, pre-release candidate. Um, run up a, a VM, um, do your testing. Um, it is fully supported. So if you have issues, you absolutely can raise support cases uh, with SolarWinds and with us to assist with any issues that you may encounter. Um, is it possible to add custom top level menu options? Right, um, I was expecting this one when we were looking at the GUI. So this is a situation where we've got home and we've got network. Uh, no, uh, at the moment, and I know this has been a long running feature request, it is not possible currently to create new named entries for the top level menus. Um, how we get around this is by um, utilizing um, one of the existing menus that may or may not be used um, to provide uh, custom links. Um, I think that's it. Am I seeing any others? I think that's it. I think we're pretty much bang on time. If there are any other questions, uh, please put them through. Uh, we will be making this recording uh, available, so uh, please keep an eye out on your emails on how to access that. Um, and oh, we've got another question in before we close. Will NetPath get a remote probe polar for Raspberry Pi? So this, uh, again, is an obvious scenario. Um, so where we're coming from on that is the fact that a Windows box uh, is probably a little bit um, heavyweight for just using as a probe. Um, things like Raspberry Pis, um, uh, low power, small, um, all in one uh, PCs such as Raspberry Pis are ideal candidates to be using as a, a source device. Uh, so, yes, the path uh, for the roadmap for this application, I use path in the wrong sense there, it's going to confuse everyone, apologies. Uh, but yes, NetPath will have a probe agent for Linux that is absolutely on the roadmap. Okay, so with that, I thank you all very much for your time. I hope it's just been informative and beneficial. I do apologize again for the uh, issues we had uh, showing the live demonstration uh, to you, uh, but please keep an eye out for the release candidates and as I say, we will be sending a recording of the demonstration. Have a good afternoon, everyone.